Hi, and welcome to my show. Uh, I'd like to consider myself the uh, Regis Philbin of uh, Portland. Uh, Regis just passed away. Uh, the tributes on television for this wonderful, wonderful man uh, have been all over, uh, all over the news. Uh, one of the most incredible things about Regis is that he uh, set the Guinness World Book of Records for having the most time on TV, and I'm going to try to surpass that if I live to be 140. Uh, folks, over the course of years, I've had the pleasure of looking forward to my guests. Uh, Brenda Lee, the singer, uh, F. Lee Bailey, the attorney, Janet Mills. Uh, but the gentleman I'm about to have on is one of my absolute favorites, and that's because I read him every single day. He is one of the best columnists, uh, not only in this state, but in the country, in my opinion. He's got three important qualities. One is a conscience. Secondly, intelligence. And thirdly, a fantastic ability to write. I have to admit that I sometimes emulate his style when I write my own columns, but I don't come very close. Uh, and he is Bill Nemitz. Bill, welcome aboard. Thank you, Derry. <laughs> it's good to be here. This uh, doesn't make me Kathleen Gifford, does it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always wonder, first of all, the, the, the effusive remarks about him, and, yeah. and, and they lasted 15 years, and, and uh, Terry Gammy and I, and Steve Schwartz did a few years, and yeah. the last time you were yeah. on was with Terry Gammy. Yeah. But, uh, Bill, I want to start right out of the blocks with something that you wrote about uh, a, a couple weeks ago, and then it made news again, and that is the situation at the park in Buxton. Are things better there now? Um, I, well, it's shut down, so I guess, yeah, they are. <laughs> you know, it's, nobody can get in. And, in fact, after the, uh, the weekend that I wrote that column, for those <clears throat> who might know, Pleasant Point Park is a uh, town park, right. which was deeded to the town from the state. We're beautiful. Beautiful, 60 right. acres on the Sarko right on the River, river. Yeah. Uh, and it's been getting trashed yeah. every weekend. It's, uh, I mean, really badly. But then it took another step. It wasn't just the kids and the litter and all that stuff. When the police would go down there and try to see what's going on, uh, a couple of times it became kind of threatening for them. They were, treat they were treated with disrespect. Yeah, well, they were surrounded, and, and yeah. you know, one time there was just one cop down there, and he's got 45 drunken young people, people around yeah. him. Uh, so they've had to kind of beat a hasty retreat. So that was what prompted the chief to say, we're going right. to shut this thing down completely, yeah. which they did the weekend I wrote that right. column. Uh, and sure enough, uh, they put up the tape, they put up the signs that Saturday. Uh, I think that Saturday and Sunday, I think they made upwards of 30-odd arrests. Uh, really? Kept, they kept coming. Yeah. They, and, uh, but right now, as far as I, I, whenever I've been down there, it's quiet. Yeah. And the town right now <clears> is <throat> trying to figure out a way to uh, open well, it back up. Uh, folks, I, I wrote to Bill the next day because uh, I'm fortunate to live right near Fort Williams. We live right up the street. And when I go to that park, folks, and, and see people from all over the world, and it's, it's an immaculate park, and they sell mm -hmm. the lobster rolls. And even if I see a, an errant gum wrapper mm -hmm. or something, uh, which is few and far between, I'm so proud to go there and enjoy myself. And I felt so bad mm -hmm. for the people of Buxton oh, yeah, awesome. that can't yeah. go to their lovely right. park right. and enjoy themselves and not feel threatened. And, and the, <clears throat> the deed restriction is such that it, it, you, you could say, okay, just let people from the town go there. Well, that's not the way the right. covenant is written. Right. So it has to be open to everyone. Sure. Uh, so they're, they're trying to grapple with that right now. I mean, the number of empties they took out that one weekend, they're talking about trying to be able to fund a park ranger. If you took those empties to the Redemption Center, you could probably, <laughs> you could, right. you, you probably could have paid a park ranger for that week with the number you of You know, Bill, I almost were. was going to ask you, uh, would, would there be such a thing as a bunch of people having a GoFundMe situation so that they could hire private security guards or something? But I, I assume that might have been thought yeah, of. But well, they're <clears> working <throat> on it. The selectmen are working on it and uh, just trying to come up with a plan so that they can make it accessible to people right. but control the craziness. I, I got a boat. We go up and down the, that stretch of the Saco River all the time. And sure. The favorite part of the boat ride is, you know, you, slow, you come to a stop in the river and you watch the kids coming off the rope yes. swings. yes. You know, and it, it can be dangerous. No and there question. was a tragedy there there was a few years ago. Uh, yeah. I think it was two years ago. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, so, you know, it's a great place. It's just, uh, I don't know, sign of the times, you know? People yeah. going sign of the times. crazy, you know? Sign of the times, yeah. anger. Some yeah. people have got some anger. Yeah, and the reaction to the police, I think, was, yeah. was unwarranted. You know, I mean, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, by the way, over the course of this interview, I might throw out a couple of questions that just come out of nowhere. Uh, <laughs> but folks, uh, the title of this show, <clears throat> is the elections. Who's going to win and why? And I want to tell you folks that uh, I have friends on both sides of the equation. I have friends that think Donald Trump is the greatest president that ever lived. I've got friends that think exactly the opposite. 
Same with Susan Collins and Sarah Gideon. Both sides. Uh, people that think LePage was the greatest governor that ever walked. And we now have Janet Mills, who I think personally is doing a very good job. So uh, the views you're going to hear today are uh, not necessarily views from our hearts, although maybe from Bill's, but more from my experience as a government major at Bowdoin College and having been in politics, having worked in Washington for Ed Muskie, and knowing uh, 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 the politicians on both sides. So I'm going to start right out of the blocks, Bill. <laughs> LePage. 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 Will he run? Will he run, first of all? In 2022, I suspect, <clears throat> if, I, if, if, if I had to guess today, I would say yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, uh, well, no great insight there. He said he's going to run. A lot of things in the past, too. That's correct. I think he's itching to get back into it. I think a lot of his activities over the past several months uh, seem pointed toward that. I don't think he's going to be able to resist the temptation. Okay, so. uh, next question, and I'm going to give you my answers. The next question, uh, if he does run, can, not will, but can he win? I, I doubt it. Okay. Yeah, I really do. I think uh, at this point, Governor Mills uh, is, is riding pretty high okay. in, in her handling of the uh, pandemic, yeah. which seems to kind of overwhelm everything else. Okay. But uh, she, she's out of the blocks. I think she's doing pretty well. And, you know, I mean, the incumbency is always a hard hurdle to get over. So, so I, I, don't, I don't think he can beat her. Okay. So, folks, uh, question one. Uh, I say he's not going to run. I say there's mm -hmm. going to be something about health or that, that, uh, that uh, the party will talk him out mm -hmm. of it. Uh, and number two, uh, we disagree on that, too, because I think he can win. <laughs> <laughs> and the, re the reason is, is because I have a feeling that some people at that side will be uh, so angry about uh, the virus that happened, something that happened to them with unemployment. I fully agree. They're still there. Okay. But... Uh, yeah, especially if, if he were, you're right, he, he'd have to win the nomination. Yeah. But, but I don't think that would be terribly difficult. For yeah, him. okay. Uh, and number two, he would, uh, you know, he, in a th he's always benefited from three-way three races. Sure. Uh, so, so if we throw in another uh, uh, Elliot Cutler. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll have to see. I mean, then they have to get over the ranked choice voting hurdle with right. the state yeah. constitution, all that stuff. Okay. So, you know, it's... I think the real answer is it's too soon to tell because, as you said, it's it's two years away, and anything can happen. In two, okay. I, I mean, if 2020 has taught us anything, it's <laughs> don't even try to predict what's going to be. Well, that's why I said a month I didn't say now. will. I said can. Yeah. Uh, I, Bill, yeah. I knew this was going to be fun. And by the way, folks, I told Bill when we started the show, we, we, we want to be laughing here. We don't want to be, be serious right. the whole show. Okay. The next uh, next question, second district. Uh, Jared Dolan against uh, uh, a, an obvious uh, pro-Trump mm -hmm. running on that, yep. on that issue, Cranks. saying, oh, mm -hmm. we are going with uh, Obviously, if Trump gets elected, he'll ride those coattails, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. Uh, so, got a question. Uh, second District, Dolan, will he win? Uh, I would say yes, only because if you look at the history of the Second District, you look how long Mike Michaud held on to that right. seat. Uh, once again, the power of the incumbency. Okay. Uh, I know Jared's in his first term. Uh, but, you know, and he's done, he's been very careful, much to the chagrin of a lot of Democrats, right. I'll add, during this first term. Low profile. To, and, and to stake out this ground that, you know, edges him away from the right. for, far, further left elements yeah. of the Democratic right. Party. Uh, so he's been, I think he's been paying, paying a lot of attention to his base, if you will. Right. And uh, I think Dale Crass is a strong candidate. He's a, he's a very personable guy. Really? Have you met him? No, I haven't. <clears throat> but I've been watching him on television, and I'm thinking, you know, he's, he's, he's not a nasty guy at all. He's, he seems Good. like a very, very yeah. personable, which is what you love to see. Right. You know, yes. Just, let's yeah. start with nice people. Yes. You know? uh, and, but I think that it's uh, it's Jared's race to lose at this point. Okay. I really do, especially going into this November. Which, That's a great compliment know, to uh, to the to the other candidate. Yeah. Uh, so the other thing is, so we agree on that. Uh, next uh, question is landslide or close with Golden? Landslide or close? Uh, not a landslide. Not a landslide. No, no, I don't think so. I mean, you know, two mains. Second district is a okay. whole different ball game. So I don't think it's, I'd be surprised. Okay, so yeah. now on this question, Bill and I are 100% in agreement. Yeah. Uh, we, we, did, we predict Golden. We predict that, uh, uh, that it's, uh, it's not going to be a landslide. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, next question I want to ask you, Bill. <clears throat> Why did COVID 
become a political issue. How did, how did COVID, the mask wearing, how did mask wearing become a political issue? I, Two words, Donald Trump. There we go, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, well, anything like this is gonna yeah. be, that requires government intervention, right. which this obviously has on so many different levels, is going to become a political issue because right. that's what <clears> politics <throat> is all right. about. That said, uh, the president early on decided that this mask right. stuff was a bunch of nonsense, yep. uh, refused to wear it. Right. And I guess every once in a while he's putting one on. Yep. He's starting to come around. But, but I think he alone turned this. I think it would have been anyway, but, yep. but he poured so much fuel on that fire he did. that now it's got nothing to do with public safety. It's right. got nothing to do with transmission of the disease and it's got everything to do with labels. If you wear a mask, you're a you, weenie leftist liberal. Right, yeah, right, right. And if yeah. you don't wear a mask, <laughs> you're, you're a well, folks, raw, raw I'm gonna Donald Trump supporter. Indicate to this audience that in my next show, I intend to talk about those establishments here in Maine that uh, require masks. I must mention one, the Petro's Market, South Portland, says no mask, no pizza. However, I've been to other stores <clears throat> that don't require masks. There'll be five of us in there with masks. One person came in. Didn't have a mask when I saw the bumper sticker that said Janet Mills should go somewhere. Uh, I realized, gee, this was another political statement. Mm -hmm. So we agree on that. I have to say, uh, can we agree, uh, Bill, that if on the very first day Trump got on there and said, excuse me, this mask, please wear them. We go, oh, my God, there we go. I think, well, he, he, he came kind of close to when doing he, that when, when, yeah, when Fauci was ago. When Fauci was the, right. the new Brad Pitt, right. But, uh, and I think that, yes, I do think it would have that impact. Yeah. I mean, I got my mask, I, I'm, 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 what are we, seven feet? Right, we, 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 we talked about it, folks, <laughs> right. and we decided uh, we did the mask. Well, the problem is I couldn't see you because my glasses were fogging <laughs> up. But, but uh, I think if he were mm. to do that, I think it would have a noticeable impact on the number of people wearing masks. I don't think he's capable of doing that because I, to do that would be even a tacit admission on his part that he was wrong. And right. this guy just and, can't and, say he's and, wrong. Right. Uh, and I, I'm not going to make any comment on that, but th that's true. Yeah. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about <clears throat> is because let's face it, a huge player in the Senate, huge player in this election. Uh, and folks, I went through and got some pictures of people. Uh, that I was going to show, and uh, uh, my director, Josh, is going to put him up uh, later, but I did, I, I tried to find a decent picture of McConnell, <laughs> and, and they're all like this. And I'm not trying to be mean here. I tried to find, like, a, a, uh, you know, I got a good picture of Susan Collins, beautiful. Uh, so I wasn't trying to be mean, but uh, the, the, out of the blocks, uh, McConnell, is he going to win? You know, I would have said yes, but the more I see Amy McGrath, the more impressed I am. Okay. I mean, this is a really down to earth, not, you know, she will never be accused of being a member of the squad. You, right. know, I mean, <laughs> she, you know, she's not a fire breathing liberal. Right. Yeah. And every time I've seen her, I've said, whoa, this, this woman has some, some real, and I don't mean to disparage the squad, right. but what I mean, she, she's, she's much more attuned to the state in which she's running. So if, if it all comes crashing down in November in terms of the, yep. not just the presidency, but the, the Senate, uh, it would, and if there is, you know, a major shift uh, from, the, from the Republicans to the Democratic majority, I think it would not, it would not surprise me if McConnell went down. Okay. That. I mean, he was one of the least uh, popular senators in his home state, right along with Susan Collins. Uh, as recently as what this spring, right? So, uh, uh, Bill, I love it when we disagree. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, McConnell wins, and, um, and well, I didn't say he was going to lose. I just said I wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> okay. So well, you, you, I'm hedging. Are you gonna, <laughs> I'll put an H down there yeah, right, for hedge. Right, right. Uh, uh, and, and so either way, I also put the landslide close, and I think we both agree it's going to be close. Yeah. No question. Uh, the reason yeah. why I think he's going to pull uh, ahead is because I think he's got an incredibly powerful machine, and I think that uh, that they will um, uh, use a very strong uh, Cal Rove political tactics. You mean nasty? Yeah, uh, I think it's going to get nasty. Yeah, of course. Uh, and uh, but uh, all bets are off. Uh, all's fair in, in in politics and war, 
And so I, I think he's, he's going to win, and it's going to be close. Okay, the next one I want to go through, folks, is um, Collins and Gideon. And this is the picture, folks. Uh, this is the picture I chose of Susan Collins. Probably the nicest picture I've ever seen of her. Uh, and uh, have, and you also, seen, have you seen the pictures they're using? Of yes, each other? and I, I'm going to yeah, talk about yeah, that, by the way. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, one of the uh, things I wanted to bring in was a newspaper letter to the editor <clears throat> in which a woman said, I'm a Democrat and I'm voting for Susan Collins and let me tell you why. And she went through and spoke about all the good things that Susan's mm -hmm. done, the bipartisan stuff, uh, the, uh, her, her, her position on gay rights. Even when she uh, voted for Kavanaugh, she said, mm -hmm. I like his position on gay rights. Mm -hmm. I want to digress for a second, Bill. I want to ask you about the gay rights decision. Was that not one of the biggest fake-outs in political Which history? Which one? The Which Gorsuch one? decision on gay mm -hmm. rights getting uh, 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 civil rights. The gay rights decision that just came down. Gorsuch wrote it, and John Roberts uh, agreed. Right, right. This just—it was on my show last week. Um, Gorsuch faked everybody out. First of all, by writing the opinion. Mm -hmm. Secondly, by being very strong. Kavanaugh had a dissent, a scathing dissent, mm -hmm. saying, "What are you guys doing?" I was just so impressed with Gorsuch. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I continue to look at this as one of those stories where the train has long left the station. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I mean. If you look at the trajectory on same-sex same marriage yep. in particular, uh, how quickly this country uh, reversed its position on that. Right. Uh, it was, it was, and some people are suggesting that what's happening with, with race relations right now yes. might be following the same trajectory. Right. Where, where sometimes something, events act as a catalyst, whatever it might be, and you get this very profound, very fast, rapid social right. change. That's what happened with first with with LGBTQ rights, right. then with same sex marriage. Right. So uh, it's a, I think it's an issue that the, the 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 people on the right are kind of you know hanging on to, never going to let it go as long as they can. But the but the rest of the country has moved on, and I think that court decision was reflective. Well, of that. Uh, uh, Bill, uh, you yeah. might know that I, I wrote a book about my daughter mm -hmm. with my daughter, I, yep. uh, transgender mm -hmm. uh, who is transgender. When Trump was running, I remember him turning to the sign, look at LGBTQ, there for me. Uh, Caitlyn Jenner going to his hotel, yeah. uh, treated with great respect. Uh, and then who, get, who does he pick for his vice president but a man who prides himself on having a wife that will not teach at a school that mm -hmm. either allows gay right. students right. or gay faculty. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. And um, so I, I, I've got to say that when I read the Gorsuch decision, I would, I, I would like to be a fly on the wall on every constitutional law class in this country mm -hmm. When the professors say, you want to talk about being faked when a president uh, puts a man on there who comes out and writes the majority opinion. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I say thank you to uh, Neil Gorsuch on that one. I want to go to uh, Collins uh, and, and Gideon right wow. now. Um, because the letter to that woman that, that wrote did say I a lot. I think that was actually a column. It, yeah, it was a main voices column. Yes. Ran in the press. And this woman wrote, and she said, and exactly, she said, I'm Marianne a Democrat, Lynch, but I'm. In fact, who wrote and, it? And, yeah. and she had a lot of good yeah. things to say. And, Bill, I was going to do a fake commercial. What if Sarah Gideon got on and said, I want to commend Susan Collins on her tremendous uh, efforts for the state of Maine in the past uh, XYZ years, the so and so bill. However, it's time for a change. I'm, I don't like these negative ads, Bill, on, on the part of either of them. I don't know who started them first, well, but you better I, get would, used I would to be it, cautioning Terry. Sarah Gideon. I don't yeah. think you should be so yeah. hard on her. Yeah. Well, there's a, this is going to be, you talked about the McConnell race. This, this yeah. one is probably going to be one of the, well, certainly the most expensive race in Maine history. Right. And, uh, mm -hmm. Correspondingly, I think it's going to be the nastiest. Yes. And, and a lot, you know what happens with these. You know, a lot of the stuff that you see on television is not, uh, they let the PACs do their dirty work for them. You know? Yes. Yeah, Although the even pack, some yeah. of the candidate ads are getting yeah. a little, already no. yeah. getting a little jagged. Yeah. Uh, but I just think there's so much riding on this race, and there's a lot of built up frustration with Susan Collins, uh, particularly in the middle. You know, right. I mean, well, Democrats are going to be Democrats. Which is probably where I would have put myself. Right, and Republicans are going to be Republicans, but I think the place to look right now is what's happening with the migration of the independent vote, which has traditionally supported Susan Collins. And I don't, I, that's where her 
that part of her base has, has significantly hollowed out. I, I have and to it's say, it's going to be a fight for those people. Uh, I, I've always been impressed with her uh, efforts at bipartisanship. And folks, well, two of the people that I wanted to talk about today, uh, two of the greatest statesmen in, in, in Maine history, and that would be uh, uh, Bill Cohen, Republican, George Mitchell, Democrat. Two men who became friends, uh, Bill Cohen being selected as the Secretary of Defense under a Democratic president. And Bill Cohen. Remember Bill Cohen, 1974? Yes. When on the cover on the, of Time Magazine. On the Magazine. Committee. Yes. And he was the Republican who said, I'm going to vote to impeach. So, right. so be careful with your comparisons here in terms of well, Cohen and, and that's, uh, Collins. And, yeah. and the, Bill, exactly my point, yeah. because my point was that Bill Cohen could see ahead. Because, I think I need to distance myself yeah. from this president. Right. Or m maybe even more significantly, he said, I'm going to do what I think is the right, right thing. Right. Okay. And it was, a, it, it was a classic profile and courage for him to <laughs> do was. that back then. And, and I it tell you, stunned people because uh, he was this kid <laughs> from Maine. Well, Nobody knew who I, he was. I, 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 yeah. George Mitchell has always been a hero, but I used to watch Bill Cohen play basketball. Yep. And I went to Bowdoin, and I watched mm -hmm. him play against Maine when, he, when Bowdoin, with seven, eight, 900 students, beat the University of Maine in 1962. I was at the game. Bill Cohen and I talked about mm -hmm. it with my friend Bob Corey uh, when he was signing his book. And Bill says, do you remember? Right? We, we won that game. <laughs> uh, and uh, very fond of both of them. Yeah. Uh, how about this? Uh, if uh, Collins was Olympia Snow instead of Susan mm -hmm. Collins, different story? In this election, without yeah. a doubt. Uh, but we all know why Olympia yes. left, because she couldn't go to a town meeting anywhere in Maine without right. getting attacked by the, right. what was then the Tea Party That's right. people. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. And she said she'd had enough. Uh, so there's been a divergence there. You know, Olympia, true to her, I don't know, principles, whatever principles. it might be, uh, said, I can no longer function yeah. in this right. political environment. Yeah. Susan Collins, on the other hand, who once said she was only going to run for two or serve yeah, for right. two terms, is going for what, number five now? Right. And, uh, yeah. and I would say that uh, to say that Susan Collins has evolved politically is an understatement. Okay. So, you know, I think that she's basically at this point, her focus begins and ends with getting reelected. So am I going to guess that your vote for the winner is going to be Gideon? I'm not ready to say that, but I will say that it's going to be an extremely, no more of this 65, 67% for Susan yeah. Collins. This is going to be a nail biter. It's going to be, and, okay. uh, and I think I would say that Gideon has, it, she's got a good chance. Okay. She really does. Uh, but I'm again, gonna... it's, it's July. <laughs> you know, I mean, we just don't Bill, know what's that's why happen. I had you on in July. Yeah. So people could say, oh, so you can hold all this against me in <laughs> November. <laughs> Typical Roman. He has a show right. a, a week before the... Right, you know, I can see it now. Uh, You're checking uh, these things off. You're going to call me in here on November, what, 5th? And I'm going I'm I'm to I'm pick uh, Gideon, and I'm going to pick it's going to be very close. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, 2 or 3%. Okay, folks. We're now coming to the wire here. Uh, Trump and Biden. Uh, first question, who's going to win? <laughs> uh, we learned in 2016 not to make predictions yeah, in right, July. Yeah. And, I, and I have been saying throughout this whole year, we don't know, as I said earlier, what's going to happen next month, what are, what, let alone what the conditions on the ground are going to be six months from now <clears throat> or now a, yeah. a little under 100 days from now. Uh, but... I think that, that the circumstances are, are in so many ways different from what they were in, in 2016. This is shaping up as a referendum on Trump's handling yes. of the pandemic. Right. Plain and simple. Okay. And I agree on if that. he blows that, he's gone. And there's, I've seen very little, no indication actually to date that he understands how to get a handle on this thing. Uh, more importantly, that he's even interested in understanding that. Uh, so you think he's, uh, I, I, I sort of feel bad for him that, I mean, God, he was doing okay, the economy is doing good, and all of a sudden this thing comes along. I mean, he doesn't seem to be enjoying like himself perfect that storm. much. You know, all the things that could possibly, yeah. well, this is my other theory. I've got this crack crazy theory. That, Which uh, is what? That he's self-sabotaging, you know? You know? Bill, it's I don't It's not mean, that crazy. A lot Bill, of people I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I said that to my... Mm -hmm. Uh, a niece the, last week 
I said, I think he knows he's going to lose, and he's just going to build this base. And, and, and the I, other I, have the, I had the same thought, Bill. I don't mean to be chiming in like, me too, me too, but I had the same thought. The other thing I said back when he was first elected, that, yeah. you know, November of, of 16, right. uh, I predicted that he will not serve out the, his full first term. Oh and goodness. I'm still not ready to give up on that. <laughs> you you got to come out of 60 we minutes. Gotta, we, well, I know, but w just wait. <laughs> just wait. Because, uh, because here's two, he's got two choices. Yeah. He, he can lose yeah. and, and refuse to leave the White House and get carried out yeah, by, right, yeah. by the Secret Service. Or, <laughs> or he can see the writing on the wall, and a week before the election, if he's still tanking in the yeah. polls, uh, walk away. Walk away. Okay, folks, you heard it first from Bill Nimitz <laughs> on this show. Uh, but Bill. Uh, it might be wishful thinking. Gary. I know. I I know. know. Uh, yeah. I'm going to say it's going to be Biden. I'm going to say. I agree, by the way. Uh, if I okay, so we agree on that one. Mm -hmm. I say <clears throat> it's going to be um, uh, close uh, in, uh, in the electoral, uh, but not so close. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a pretty wide margin for the popular, but pretty close on the electoral. I disagree with that. Because, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because you know why? Because look at, look at the uh, battleground states right now Pennsylvania, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, all those, uh, Michigan, yeah. uh, Wisconsin. Yeah. Oh, well, obviously Florida, and he's tanking in Florida. Okay. Uh, so, a lot of those states that put him over the top yeah. last time, you know, by right, you know, tens of thousands, you know, twenty thousand yeah. votes. I think those states are all going in the other direction right okay. now. So I'm not sure it's going to be a squeaker, even electoral. Okay, folks, I'm closing with this final question. My buddy Terry Garmy wrote to me this morning and said, you need to ask this question. And I wrote back and said, Terry, not only am I going to ask the question, it's my final question. <laughs> You've already alluded to it. I asked our camera folks mm -hmm. here, uh, if he's elected, uh, will he go willingly or is he going to put up a fight such that it's going to be front page news and you think he's going to do well, that? Well, define fight. Well, like, yeah. he, he's just going to refuse I mean, to really go. Wanna, you know, he's going to refuse to go yeah. and it's going to be front page news. Yeah, he's going to yeah, try this. Yeah. He's going to try a bill or uh, whatever. He will definitely challenge the legitimacy of the election. Okay. No question. No question. And Without a how. whether he will actually hole up in his bedroom and refuse to come out on January 20th, be great TV, okay. which is what he's all about. Okay, so folks, we'll we want to wrap up. Bill, please come back. Uh, folks, I'll see you next month. I'm going to do a rock and roll show, trivia show. Thank you. Thanks for coming.